We will now change a little bit the nature of our theme. We will continue with attack orientation, but talking more about the people and not so much about the technology itself. The topic of the talk is hunters versus farmers. To approach it, we have with us the talent recruitment leader at Quan. She has 10 years of experience in the human resources area and has been working in the implementation and management of processes in the different areas such as recruitment and selection, training, newcomers integration, job description, performance management, fridge benefits, internal regulation. Please give a warm welcome to Fernanda Moraes. Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, thank you very much for inviting a no-tech person to talk today about people in a tech stage. Um, it's obviously a great pleasure to be here today. Um, I received the invitation to talk about uh, hunters versus farmers. Um, and actually, that was uh, a, ch a challenging topic for me in the sense that I could not approach this dig to me without having some judgments on value that are quite uh, common when we have dictomies. So I, I decided to put this topic on uh, our nowadays context, uh, and obviously taking consideration also what is going on in 2022 with all the economic crisis, all the phenomena within the, the working context. First of all, this dictomy comes from a very specific context. It comes from the Sally context, and it was used to try to understand how people within the sales context work differently and have a different set of skills um, based on the way they want to be their goals achieved. Okay. So farmers, we used to say that they are mainly oriented people. They really love to stay in the same company. They see the company has the correct context in order to develop the set of skills, in order to develop their motivation and their goals. They usually are natural leaders, concerned about the others, and looking for the best way to develop the company they are working for. On the other side, we have the hunters that are much more assertive people. Um, they are not that much concerned with the current company. They are much more concerned about their own motivations and how they can achieve it. They prefer to change from another company to other, uh, if things are not going the way they like. You used to say that they get things done in a very quick way, um, and they are not co that much committed with the, the company as the, the um, farmers. So, taking this in consideration, we may say that perhaps farmers will stay longer in the company, um, they will give everything they have in order to develop the company, and hunters we we'll stay less time, we prefer to be moving from another place to another. And, as I've mentioned previously, this thing to me gets more complex when we consider our modern working context and the tendencies we are reaching now. As everybody knows, we have a lot of open positions nowadays, we have a very low unemployment rate, we have flexibility, remote work, worldwide opportunities, and obviously we have a lot of very different generations working in nowadays, and this will be one of the things I'll be talking about. As a consequence, this context leads to high turnover, hard to recruit. Uh, our previous speaker was saying exactly this, that they face uh, an important number of challenges recruiting, especially for tech industry, but it's a phenomenon uh, that are also in other areas. The rate of resignation, very familiar, especially at the United States, and this recent phenomenon, quit quicking, when people just want to do as less as they can and uh, are leaving the companies very fast as well. So, those are the generations we have currently working. Baby boomers, um, I would say that they are the less representative group nowadays. They are around 58 to 76 years old. Most of them are almost retired, even though they have executive positions in the organizations and they have some influences on the decisions. Then we have Generation X, the most representative as well as millennials. Both of them represent an important values and, and important uh, influences within our, uh, working, our, our working context nowadays. And then the Generation Z, 
that is much more, are the younger, some of them starting now in the working context, and obviously thinking very different and being shaped by very different phenomena as well. I'll talk mainly about Generation X and Millennials, mainly because they are the most representative within the working context nowadays. You have here some details on how they are char characterized, what they value, and those are the important things for the organizations. For recent generation, the act was obviously shaped by some familiar dynamics changes. They have a very different lifestyle when comparing with their parents. They start working with the initial computers, etc. So highly influenced by the, by the technology. And then millennials, um, much more well-educated, tech-savvy, appreciation diversity, trying to work remotely, value very different things. So um, the point... Uh, much more than have a dick to me event between hunter and farmers and which is the best thing for the organization is much more um, recognizing nowadays that it's hard to retain people that we need to be transparent that we need to make millennials feel special that we need to help the generation Z thinking about retention etc so i don't want to go deep on the dick to me i do prefer to take as a statement that people are different they will behave in a different way in, within the organizations, they will have different motivation and it's our role to make sure that they feel comfortable, they feel in a secure place and they have everything they need to achieve their, their goals and their motivations. I believe that I pretty much answered that question. It's not about which one are better, the ones that stay longer or the, one, or the ones that leave earlier. It's much more about having this set of politics and have the sets of practices that allows both of them feel supported, feel that they have the things that they, they need to develop themselves. And obviously, and I, I believe that Ricard mentioned it as well, that they feel um, that the organization is really concerned about, about them and have HR policies that are exactly um, designed not only for one type of people, not only for hunters, not only for farmers, but for all of them, even though they are very different and probably will have a very hard work in order to have all those things accomplished, but should be our focus as well. And as a conclusion, I, I think I already mentioned almost everything, but I would like to say that obviously it's really important to have multiple generation on board and capitalize the different traits, both hunters, both farmers, offer learning experience for, for all of them, um, trying to learn from one to another, trying to understand that perhaps millennials, which are high qualified, have a lot of things to, to teach to the Generation Z, and obviously Generation Z with a very, um, ex a very large experience, having faced very different problems, we also have some important inputs for, for the younger generation. Create workplaces, choices, meaning let the people say where they want to work, how they want to work, giving them autonomies to define and to design the set of working. Um, operated from a refined management skills, which means don't have the same management style for everybody. This won't work, and we really need to have a personalized approach in when we're speaking about management for each one of the people we are working with. Respect always, obviously, competencies and creativity. Everybody has something new to approach, and leaders should be in these positions that they can obviously listen to people and understand how we can give them um, the comfort they need to express themselves. And other, at, at least, and important as well, nourish employee retention, meaning have in mind the correct set of practices that can allow us to nourish our people to make our people feel special and to make sure that even there are a huge difference between hunters and farmers or between millennials and generations that all of them have important things to bring to the company and it's our um, role as leaders to take, them, take all of them on board and make sure that they feel happy and they feel the success can be done within our organization. Thank you very much, everybody. I don't know if someone wants to ask questions.
Thank you. Uh, more of maybe or like a philosophical question. Uh, can ha hunters be happy at work? Or will I they? I think, yeah. I okay. think depending on the... I was discussing this with uh, one of my colleagues the moment we were trying to understand how we should approach this, uh, this lecture. And uh, depending on the context, it uh, might be very attractive to have hunters working if you want to reach a result in a very fast pace, if you want to have someone that is really focused on results, that really cares about the results and perhaps don't care that much about people, probably you have a great advantage having a, a hunter personality. And if you give all the autonomy to this person, I'm sure uh, she or he will be really happy working in the context that uh, needs to get things done, that there is a lot of pressure. Um, so yeah, I would say that this, I think I will speak mostly about Portugal, which is a, a culture that I, I know a little bit uh, deeper. Here in Portugal, there is a kind of um, statement that if you are changing from one work to another, from one company to another, in a very short period of time, uh, this means that you are not committed with the company. I don't see the things exactly like this. Um, Probably you are really happy with your company, but you just figure out there is someone or another place that makes you more, even more happy. Uh, or even it's about, it even could be about money. I don't see that there is a problem of changing from one, other, from one company to another in a very short period of time. Um, obviously, from a company perspective, this is not that good because it means you are always onboarding people, etc. But uh, yeah, I would say they most probably will be happy in a working context as uh, the company is able to provide to those people the autonomy they need to work on their own way. Okay, so continue the question that was just made. Um, how, do you, how do you think uh, companies can make um, farmers happy? So it's the other way around. Yeah, farmers, um, I think it's much more about this concept that it's on our late, uh, late slide, meaning nourish your employee. And uh, nourish empl your employee is really challenging in the sense that perhaps the things that I value are not the same things that you value. And usually the company has a set of practices that are the same for everybody. And uh, they, they have exactly the same type of uh, nourishment for everybody. So I think for, for hunters, is the most important is have this sense that the company is valuing me, is training me, is coaching me, is giving me the chance to express myself is giving me the opportunity to look for junior people, to integrate in them within the company, is giving me space to create something that makes people grow within the company. The difference for hunters is that hunters usually are concerned about themselves. So if it's good for me, that's fine. Um, farmers usually are concerned about the others as well and their uh, level of commitment, it's higher when they feel that they are working for a major mission or for a major goal. So I would say that the difference is this, is the company be able to make them feel important, relevant, and take, uh, take in consideration their opinions as well. Hi. Uh, it's more a curiosity. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, do you believe that it's harder to manage these two profiles, hunters and farmers, or the people that prefer remote and presential work in the company? Because I see both profiles uh, liking both sides of the hybrid works. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I I don't have like a 
a right answer for this question. I would say that, generally speaking, probably hunters would prefer the, um, the remote work in the sense that they don't need this supportive network and they don't value that much relationships. Um, however, I don't think, I think both of them will be uh, happy in a, remote, uh, in a remote model or in a hybrid model. It will depend also on the context of the person. Perhaps if someone has a, a more uh, challenging personal life, we'll prefer to stay at uh, working remotely. If someone really is valued to work and travel at the same time, we'll prefer to work remotely. I think this preference for the style of working, it's not 100% related with your style as hunter or as farmer, has other valuables in, uh, in Kant as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fernanda. Let me remind you that on the digital platform or through the Future Works app that you can have on any device, we want to share, inspire, develop new skills, increase your network of contacts. If you look carefully at the home page, you can follow the Future Works stage and find all the shortcuts in the menu bar. The recommended for you option provides personalized matchmaking. In the events agenda, you can find the global agenda of the event with filters by day, topic, and stage. You can add the sessions that interest you the most to your own agenda by going to the session and then click on the button Add to Schedule. All your sessions will appear in the My Schedule area. And don't worry, if you can't watch the session at the scheduled time, after the event, we'll have all the sessions available in the events agenda. Just access the session you want and find the video. Don't forget that if you're joining us from home using our platform during the sessions, you can interact via chat with speakers and other participants. Also, participate in the Q&A polls and rate sessions. Our speakers love feedback. <laughs>